Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online worship from Bethany for today, for this Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, the greatest Sunday in the church's year. I greet you warmly in the name of the Lord, and I pray his blessing upon you on this most wonderful of days. We begin today with the traditional resurrection morning chant. When I say the words, Christ is risen, respond to me with the words, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Apostle Peter writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So come to worship on this glorious day, being confident of this new birth, this new life, because of our Lord Jesus and the fact he has been raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. Let's come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you on this joyful day. We come to worship. We recognize your glory and your power over all the world. We come in thanksgiving and with love because of the wonder of your provision for our lives on this day. And it's joy that we also feel, especially when we recognize that Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lived, who suffered, and who died for us, has been risen from the dead, is risen our victorious head, and is present with us indeed as we stop on this day to acknowledge the wonder of the reality of the Lord. Lord God, you are the true God of all the world. Even death could not defeat you. We recognize your glory and we bring our worship to you today. Lord, we are so aware that to bring that proper worship to you is to offer to Jesus Christ our very lives in surrender and indeed in love. Forgive us, Lord, we pray, when sometimes we hold things back. Our commitment is lacking. Our faith, perhaps, is hidden. On this day of all days, we ask you, indeed, to renew our commitment to you, to dwell in power among us, and that we might know deep within and, indeed, through our lives that you are Lord, that you are our Saviour. And Lord, may your spirit also be active with us to fill up indeed our brokenness and to restore what might be hurt. Encourage us too in our continuing perhaps weakness and our sin. Grant then, Lord, on this day, this very special day, may it be that new beginning also for us, just as Easter Day was for Jesus Christ himself. Come, risen Lord, come amongst us in your risen power and strength. May we see you and may we worship you today and in the whole of our lives. We ask it for your glory's sake. Amen.
The Empty Tomb John chapter 20 Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen wrappings, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth which had been round Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen wrappings, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. She answered, they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary? She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni? This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. Friends, I have to say that I've been enjoying recently um, on Netflix and on Prime Video uh, some real-life crime series. The latest I've seen involves the world's worst roommates. An interesting title and some truly shocking stories uh, behind them. But, but in so many ways, they're like that, of course. People behave in the most dramatic of ways. And others who've obviously been involved with this or been affected by it, after the events, they've tried to piece together exactly what went on and solve the clues in many ways to find out what happened to them and why, because of some of these people. They're more than stories, of course, in our lives today. They are situations and, and people around us that truly challenge us as well. John's account of the resurrection is, I think, in many ways very like that. Some bizarre conditions, he describes. Some dramatic encounters. And of course, as we always know with John, who was the last of the Gospel writers, he usually adds these extra dimensions to the Jesus story. No words or situations are wasted with John. He designed it exactly as it was so. And he's been the Gospel of choice for us in Bethany over the Easter period. So to his account of the resurrection, John chapter 20. Look at the information that we are given. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb on her own. She sees the stone removed, doesn't seem to investigate further, assumes the worst, and then runs to tell the disciples that the body has been stolen. And then Peter and this other disciple, they go. And Peter goes in, and the other one loiters at the door. Peter looks carefully at the linen body wrappings and the position of things, 
uh, that he are carefully described here. But then he seems to disappear. And the other disciple sees, and he says, believes. And then, of course, further on down the road, the disciples also seem to disappear. And Mary is left crying outside the tomb. She is then presented with angels who ask her the question. But they also seem to disappear as Jesus himself comes and stands before her. Her initial understanding of him, of course, as the gardener is quite dramatic in itself and quickly, of course, dispelled by our Lord. But then Mary also is told that she must not hold on to Jesus. There appears to be some sort of problem with his physical being, something to do with his return to the Father. Confused and a bit perplexed by all of that? Yes, I think we are. And why is it that John paints his picture on Easter Sunday this way? Do you know, I think the answers are given a little later in John's text, particularly with the story of doubting Thomas, which we know so well. He's the one who cannot believe without actually seeing the risen Jesus, without touching and, and feeling the risen Jesus. He is very stubborn in his objections. Jesus' words to him later, and John records them, I think are crucial. Do you believe because you see me, says Jesus? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? I think that's where John wants to get to. And I think he's begun that at that resurrection moment early in the morning. Faith in Jesus begins as we take that step, friends, of believing upon this, the resurrection of Jesus, without seeing the physically raised Jesus and in the flesh. And as we, of course, are gathered in Bethany today, as you are watching at home or wherever you are watching on this joyous morning, I guess, too, that is where our belief, our faith also has to start. My guess also is that you can walk down practically any street in Britain today. And most of the people you meet, well, perhaps they'll have no problem believing that there was a man called Jesus, that he lived in Israel 2,000 years ago. They probably would have no problem either with the fact that he died on the cross. Most would call his death perhaps also a bit unjust. Yep, sure, he probably didn't deserve that. But then you come to the resurrection moment. You tell them that Jesus rose from the dead, that Jesus is alive today. In most cases, the arms will then go up a bit in defense and say, well, hang on a second. Where is he then? How can I encounter him? And that's harder to believe and even more difficult to understand. Ultimately, friends, that's where we are on Easter Sunday morning. And I can suggest that there is three ways that we can receive this news. Three ways that we can either understand or not the risen Christ on Easter Sunday. And I think they're all here too in the Gospel of John. First of all, friends, there is disbelief. No chance. Perhaps even when the evidence is looked at and weighed up carefully. Of course, I've got little time for those who perhaps dismiss any suggestion of this while still in ignorance of the story and of the witnesses. The conclusion is reached, of course, without looking seriously at it. And I think John paints that picture in Peter, the disciple who goes to the tomb and who sees, but he says nothing and who runs away. He looks at everything around him, doesn't seem to grasp it at all. The other disciple, however, is, I think, a bit different. John suggests to us that he saw and he believed. It's an interesting statement, that. It's not explained exactly what he believed. But as you read this gospel frequently, it does use the same Greek word to describe absolute faith. 
It's the same Greek word too that's used when Jesus is later addressing doubting Thomas. Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? So that's what's happening to this disciple. He saw, he believed, and it's by faith. He sees that Jesus is risen from the dead. And although he's, you know, the, those later words, they still do not understand the scriptures which said he must rise from death. Of course, that, that faith reaction, it doesn't necessarily mean that we understand it all. But it's taking Jesus, it's taking the reality of this time at his word. And more than anything else, that's exactly what's advocated in this story as John records it. Jesus also encourages it. That step of believing without physically seeing and perhaps without truly understanding. And then thirdly, the third reaction. I think we see in the emotion of Mary. We can all react, I think, still in this way also on Easter Sunday. Friends, recognize with me, Mary is utterly devoted to her Lord. Even in death, she goes to the tomb to make sure things are right and things are done properly. She seems to veer one way and then the other in assuming first of all that all is lost, the body has gone, or indeed that the gardener who she encounters has taken it. Finally, all she wants to do, of course, is to hold on to Jesus when she realizes who he is. Unsure of exactly what to do, but she knows she's in the right place and with him. But Jesus, in his reaction to her, reveals it is for more than her life that he has come. More than that moment in the garden. He has to leave her. And he has to go and indeed reveal himself to many more people than just to Mary. And I think that's a wonderful statement too. Things are different now, in this moment, for Jesus. The relationship he's had with Mary has also changed. And she must grasp the significance of Jesus' words, that I am returning to him who is my father and your father. John ultimately doesn't really tell us whether this transition for Mary was a successful one for her. And there's a caution, I think in Mary's reaction, and in Jesus' seemingly put down to her. Because some of us get very emotionally attached to this day. Emotionally charged, perhaps, by the joy and the experience of this moment. But then life returns to normality. And somehow, the reality, the difference between the close friend that I can serve and the Lord Almighty to whom I must give my whole life. That is too big a hurdle for some. Perhaps that was the case for many also of the disciples in those days who knew Jesus the man, but then ultimately couldn't deal with Jesus the Lord Almighty returning now to the glory of the Father and desiring indeed that we sacrifice our lives for him. Faith in the resurrection, the reality that Jesus is no longer dead, that a body is no longer there, is marked, says John, forever by that moment, by those who believe in the glory of Christ without ever seeing the risen Lord Jesus. I think on Easter Sunday then, friends, John gives us real drama and he shares with us how people reacted to it. Some believed, some doubted, some didn't believe at all. And others were overtaken with emotion that they couldn't carry on with what they now had. Years later, friends, I think little has changed, it seems to me. Reactions to the message of that day, I think, remain more or less the same. There is indeed no doubt as to which camp John wants us to be in. Faith is about believing in 
owning the Lord Jesus in our lives today and challenging our lives to change in the name of Jesus. We started by suggesting, of course, it was something like a dramatic real-life situation, something like a puzzle to solve. And you know, the end of any good drama on TV will give us the answers, the dramatic lead absolutely to a conclusion and how it all ultimately pieces together. We can all be puzzled one minute by it, but the next, the drama comes to an end, the puzzle is solved, and most of the time we say, well, of course, that's exactly what I expected to happen. Ultimately, friends, today, Easter Sunday, invites us to consider another drama, the drama of faith and the call to life itself in Jesus Christ, our Saviour, our now exalted Lord, the one who lived as a man, but is now high exalted in heaven. By his resurrection, let's not forget, Jesus demonstrates to us that death is not the end, that life does continue as we all return to the Father in heaven, as he did. And those who trust in him for salvation will find that faith ultimately exonerated, will find that faith ultimately completed. I believe then it will all become clear and obvious to us all. The drama will be concluded. The question is, though, of course, will we be the ones to get the credit and receive the reward? Or will we be those who are so emotionally perhaps involved one minute, but then really we've left out the reckoning? We're ill prepared for the glory of Christ. On this Easter Sunday, my friends, consider this drama, consider this moment. But my prayer is that you will be amongst those who believe in it and who stake their lives upon it without ever truly seeing it now. The one who takes their stand now commits our way to following Jesus today. Not the man who lived 2,000 years ago, but the now exalted Lord of heaven and of earth, resurrected and ultimately returning also to judge and to rule the world. And let's choose indeed to put our whole life, our whole experience under his lordship. That is the wonderful light of the truth of the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray it's your truth as well this Easter time. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Let's come with our prayers today, beginning with our prayer of response to God's word. Lord God, we come to you on this day, this moment of resurrection, rejoicing in Jesus, our now resurrected Saviour, the one who died, but the one now exalted and in your presence and forever. Help us, we pray this day, to truly mark what that exaltation means. Sometimes we know we can affirm this time and rejoice in this new life today, but yet let the reality of it for the rest of our lives somehow pass us by, either in unbelief or else what difference does it really make to me? We affirm with Mary the thought that Jesus shared, I am returning to my father and your father. You cannot hold on to me here. But yet by letting go and at that time, Mary is the first to have that opportunity to believe upon the risen and exalted Christ and for all time. May we be those who mark this moment in that way, affirming the difference that it makes to our lives each day. Not just to affirm Jesus Christ who is raised from death, but the risen Lord of all, crowned with glory and honour and being our Lord and King, by faith, 
today and every day. Lord, affirm this day in our hearts and in our minds. But may our faith be stirred today and our lives forever changed because of this day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we continue in prayer for our world in our intercessions today. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. And on this Easter day, we, your people, unite in prayer for our world and for our nation, for our neighbours and for our friends. Lord, unite your people as we pray and as we proclaim the gospel of love in anguish. For all of those who will not be joyful, but will be mournful this day. Perhaps, Lord, in the aftermath of a family death, perhaps memories of Easter's past, perhaps concern for a loved one robbed of their life by debilitating illness. Father, comfort those who mourn today. Reveal your love to them and for those they have lost and for their own lives as they also continue. Lord, unite your people as we pray and as we proclaim your gospel of joy in despair. For the people of our nation, for other nations too, dealing with the rising cost of living and then discrimination and disability as well. Those who cope with the reality also of family breakups and disease and addiction too. We remember those struggling also with the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Pray for those in the public eye whose decisions matter to the public at large. Lord, unite your people as we pray and as we proclaim your gospel of peace in turmoil. Father, we consider and remember all of those who have suffered and are suffering in Ukraine, but other areas too that are war-torn in our world today. We plead with you, because we know that you can bring a change of heart and mind. You can bring a process of peace, a resolution that will be acceptable for everyone. May those who fight, and those indeed who lead them into fighting, May they find a swift and peaceful resolution and be with all of those who are caught up in the violence today. Lord, unite your people as we also pray, as we proclaim your gospel of love in action. We pray for the life and witness of this church fellowship, for all who come within these walls, and all indeed who listen to our online broadcasts, that they may feel the presence of your spirit, and particularly today on Easter Sunday. May we show our love to them in ways that welcome them. May we joyfully fellowship one with the other and build one another up and seek your guiding hand for our witness to all who we meet. Be with us in all that we do, and indeed, may our witness be strong and life-changing for many around us. Eternal Lord God, resurrected King, these are our prayers today, and we bring them professing a trust and a dependence upon you, because we bring them in the name of Jesus, our resurrected Saviour. Amen. Friends, whoever you are, old or younger, wherever you go, whatever your strengths, whatever your weaknesses, the risen Christ will be with you to hold, to heal, to guide and to bless. Go then in peace, assured of his resurrection and of his eternal love for you. To God's glory today. Amen. <laughs>